Shout out to G-Man Boxing. All right, people. So it is official. We have the announcement. We actually had the press conference, which we're going to talk about now in a sec, because I just found the press conference amusing with Joe Joyce and Joseph Parker. Um, Joe Joyce, I'll talk about this more in a sec, but he really is, like, over the last year, he's really kind of... Do you want to say come out of his shell? And maybe that's the wrong way of, of saying it. Because if people have said that behind the scenes, he actually is quite charismatic in that sense. But at the press conference, he was really... He was giving it a bit to Joe Parker. But we'll get this fight talked about first. So obviously, it just came about out of nowhere, really. I mean, like, Frank Warren... About this time last month was when we had Joyce Hammer. And Frank Warren was stating, you know, on interviews and everything that... Fight's done. It's not happening. Ain't gonna happen. I think he even said, stop asking, won't happen. So, fast forward a month later, and we hear a little rumor mill that maybe this fight's gonna be back online. Maybe it's back, you know, underway. And then we get the announcement of press conference. So this would indicate to me that both fighters knew about this probably for the guts of a week or so, maybe a bit more. Um, I suspect, and these are just my suspicions, that Sky probably had plans for Parker that didn't involve Joe Joyce. But perhaps some of them plans fell by the wayside. Maybe they couldn't get the fighter they wanted. Maybe they just thought, actually, do you know what? We're so confident to beat Joe Joyce. We'll send Joe Parker over to BT Sport because this fight will be on BT Sport pay-per-view. Oh, boy. Um, I'm just thinking, right? AJ Usek is pay-per-view on the 20th. KSI versus whoever, whoever, I don't know who he's called, what's his, what's his name, is a, like 11 something on the zone for pay-per-view, then we've Triple G Canelo, pay-per-view, then we've this, potentially Chris Eubank Jr. versus Conor Ben in October, so five paper, am I missing one, is there another one in, in there somewhere, maybe there is, I don't know, I don't think there is anyway, but there's potentially five pay-per-views in the space of about six weeks. It is pretty crazy. Um, you know, as I said, people don't have a lot of income. I'll give you full disclosure on this, right? I could, could have gone to the Matchroom show in Sheffield this weekend. I have a media pass for it, everything, but it's just too expensive. Simple as, like, just to go over to Sheffield, it's not, a straight, it's not straightforward as going to London or Manchester. It just worked out too dear. So I had to kind of tick that and say, I can't go. And I don't like that because I would have loved to have gone. But I just was like, weighed it up and I was like, can't really justify it. You know, can afford it, yeah, but it's going to leave me with a big hole for the rest of the month. And, you know, it is what it is. So it's a, it, people are feeling it, you know, the way everything is now. So to have all them pay-per-views on in a short space of time if you're well enough to be able to afford all of them fair play to you but uh a lot of them will be they'll be well i know kraken's not a thing anymore at least i don't think that website's gone now but um what do you know what i've got a few of them that i use so we'll be all right in that regard for some of them anyway but we're talking about this fight joe parker joe joyce is in manchester all right originally when this fight was talked about in the early phases you know back in april may they were talking about london but now it's going to be in Manchester. So you would imagine that Tyson Fury, Team Fury will be at this because I mean, they're based in Manchester. Joe Parker is extremely close with, you know, Camp Tyson Fury anyway. So, you know, it's, it, you'll, you'll see a lot of, like, the Furies at that as well. And Joe Joyce in the interview or at the press conference, you know, Joseph Parker was saying, you know, he's going and he's going to hurt Joe Joyce. And Joe just kind of giggled. I was like, you could tickle me, Joe. You're going to tickle me, little Joe. And I was thinking, Gee, this is the same Joe Joyce who, when he turned over, you know, people were saying, you know, when him and Daniel Dubois were fighting, they were saying, like, oh, my God, it's going to be, like, just just like that. It's going to be, like, the quiet the quiet contest because both guys were not known for really being trash talkers. Or anything. But that's, Joe, Joe Joyce not really a trash talker, but, you know, I think ever since this interview... Speaking my mind on, yeah. on, on Twitter and, like, I'm calling these guys out... Is this a new Joe Joyce? A new fiery Joe Joyce? Well, so, so, yeah. <laughs> no, you can't take this shit no more. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just want to 
I it. still take a lot of pride in that interview because I, I felt like I got a laugh out of him. I was like, I got a laugh out of Joe Joyce. I was delighted with that. That whole day was brilliant. Live long in the memory. But talk about this fight. Joe Joyce already coming out, you know, saying, you know, Joe Parker, he, he's just going to tick him. What he's implying there is he's implying that Joe Parker hasn't got the punching power to bother Joe Joyce. Now, Joe Joyce has shown a very, very good shin in the pro games. He has. Saying that, you know, he's he's shown fragilities to the body. I know Brian Jennings hurt him to the body. In terms of big punchers, I mean, Daniel Dubois is probably the biggest puncher he's ever faced, as a, certainly as a pro. Um, he's been hit by guys like Stavern, but Stavern, Stavern is a puncher. Stavern can, or at least he could punch when he was in his heyday. I mean, that's Stavern. I mean, Jesus Christ. Oh, good Lord. I mean, he really was just... I'd never seen him in such bad shape. But Joe Joyce against Dubois, he used his jab because he knew no point taking risks. That's not saying like Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce certainly isn't chinny. But Joe Joyce knows if he's in there with someone who has good power... Don't take unnecessary risks. And you see him be a lot... He almost fights to the level of his opponent. You know, you see that when he fights guys like, you know, Christian Hammer and stuff like that. Good performance as it was. It's not as measured and as calm as he was against Dubois. Because he knows Dubois poses a risk and Christian Hammer doesn't. Against Parker, I don't think he's going to go in, you know, go straight for the juggler with Joe Parker. He's definitely going to take a look. Because Joe Parker has a lot of speed, especially early on, hand speed. And Joe Parker, although... I think Joe Parker has a lot more power than people give him credit for. I really do. I think Joe Parker's punching power, say it's underrated. I think he's a lot more. I think Joe Parker is a very explosive puncher. I don't think he's really got, I don't think he carries his power in a sense of if he's hitting you, it's either going to be quite light or it's going to take your head off. Whereas, you know, use it just a comparison. Let's look at someone like, we'll say, Compare like Sergei Kovalev and Adonis Stevenson. I know they're both like heavyweights. But in their heyday, Kovalev could hit you with any shot and hurt you. His power just carried. Whereas Adonis Stevenson, all the power was in the left hand and it was very explosive. So whilst you could you could take a few of his shots. And I know he's had a good right hook as well to be fair. But you could take a few of his shots and think, oh this isn't too bad. Then he hits you with the left and you're like, boom, lights out. Whereas Kovalev, every shot hurts. I think that that's kind of a bit like what Parker is like. You know, speed and combination, some shots, but when he sits down on them, there's definitely power there. You can see that he carries a bit of power there. But I think it's two things. One, he's just seemingly, I, it's weird. I said it when I done a review, a career review of Parker. After he fought Carlos Takam, and that was Carlos, that was a much fresher Takam than the Takam we have today. He didn't, he had rough moments in that fight. And that was back in 2016. He had rough moments in that fight. He got through it. But in rough moments. And Parker prior to that had been, you know, I think he had pretty much all of his wins by knockout apart from one or two. But from then on, whenever he stepped up, he lacked that aggression. He lacked that fire. He lacked that dog in him. And I wonder if part of that was stemming from the Takam fight. Because it was such a hard fight. Because he did gas through parts in that fight. And he seemed to have a reluctance thereafter to really let his hands go. To really take the bull by the horn. And step on the gas. Certainly when he fought world level opponents. When he fought the Alex Leopolds of the world. The Alexander Flores of the world. You know the Sean Dale Winters. Yeah that's fine. He can step on the gas and do whatever he wants there. But once he felt a perceived threat from a fighter. He just kind of went into Mr. Nice Guy mode. Now he can't do that against Joe Joyce. Will he do it against Joe Joyce remains to be seen. But Joe Joyce. I think people look at Joe Joyce. See how clunky he is. I've said it before. And they write him off. They just say, oh, he's not going to beat Joe Parker. Is Joe Parker the best heavyweight out there? No. Top 10, as is Joe Joyce. But Parker is fast foot. He's got faster hands. You know, he can land combinations. It's like, Joe Joyce is... I spoke about Josh Kelly in a previous video saying he's like a magician. He's getting you to look the other way. And most people look the other way from the trick without seeing the flaws. With Joe Joyce, it's like... Ever, it's the opposite. Everyone sees the flaws and focuses on them, but you don't realise how good he actually is. And I think it's similar. Like I think it, it's different with Joe Joyce. I give him a very good chance in here against Joseph Parker. Would I go as far as picking him? We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But as it stands now, if someone gave me five quid and said, gee, here's five quid, put your bet down, I would say, fine, thank you. 
Joe Joyce to win the fight, probably on points. Now that might change the closer we get to the fight, but right now I feel like it's a good chance Joe Joyce is going to beat Joe Parker. I don't. Parker's let me down too many times. There's too many times I've looked at Parker and thought, if you, because Parker is so talented, that's why it just irritates me when I see him fight the way he does. It's like he's got good foot speed. He's a decent chin. He's got good power. He's got everything you'd really want in a fighter. But he just doesn't seem to know how to use it. He just seems to just... He's happy to kind of coast through a fight. Like you see against Junior Fa. A Junior Fa in his next fight gets knocked out in a round by Lucas Brown. And Joe Parker, just casually as you like, does enough to get by. Oh, did I win? Oh, brilliant. What if I lose? Hey, yo. It's like, no. No, that's not going to work. And that's what's annoying because we look at Joe Parker and Junior Fah, you think Joe Parker should beat him relatively easily. And he makes it hard for himself. Doesn't he? Derek Chisora in Christmas time. I mean, Joe Parker really, that fight shouldn't have went six rounds. And it went 12 rounds. Chisora had moments in there of success. You know, arguably Chisora won the first fight. That shouldn't be happening. Someone who's as talented as Parker. And it's not like Parker's had wars or real you know, tough fights in his career. They've all been pretty straightforward. The hardest fight you ever had was probably against Dylan White. And that was four years ago. And even then, he nearly won the fight. So, I, I, I'm i giving Joe Joyce a good shot in this. At the minute now, if fight was next week, I'd be picking Joe Joyce. When I look at them together, look at their styles, look really delve into it, look at a bit of the training, I might change it. But as it stands now, I'm going with Joe Joyce. So I'll leave it with that. Hope you like the video. Different, slightly different angle, right? I'll tell you why. The original stand I've been using for the last three years, I still have it, but it, it, it's seen better days, let's be frank. And when I was actually at the conference, the press conference for Joe Joyce, um, Joe Parker, one of the other guys who was there covering it was using this same stand. And of course, I, we got chatting. He sent me a message to it, on, or a link to it on Instagram. It's 40 quid. And honestly, like it looks like it should be dearer. It really looks like it should be dearer. And this isn't even, like this is obviously higher than the original, right? That original, which is in the corner over there, when that's at its height, it's it's like, it's lower, as, as people would know. Like you'd have to carry it up to get a good interview, which is what I had to do with Joe Joyce. And my arms were like that by the end because I was holding it up so much. But this one, like, it can go 66 inches, so it can go high. It can go high. It has a thing for a normal camera as well as the phone. I can't believe, well actually, it was 40 quid, but 7 quid was for the delivery, so it was about 33 quid. I mean, honestly, if you're looking to get into making YouTube videos and you want to go on camera, or if you're ever going to events, because what I could do now is, if I go to another event, I can have this full length, and I wouldn't need to hold it, like it would hold everything, I just need to maybe adjust the, the, where the angle is, depending on how tall the fighter is, but I mean, you stand back and you walk over, you, you can hold the mic, you can, we can have both in it. So it'll make interview and fighters a hell of a lot easier. Um, you know, when I'm at these shows, which look, I'm obviously hoping to get to more. That's the that's the goal, that's the plan. I need a lot of help with that. Um obviously the channel is sponsored at the minute, but it's like I need more help. Simple as. So we're looking. We're looking down avenues and, and seeing what we can do. But that's kind of where we are at the minute. Because like I love doing it and it's great fun, it's tremendous. I love traveling, but it's expensive at the same time. And there comes a point where like, you're like, I can't just throw money away that I can't recoup at the minute, you know? It, like, I don't know, like it, it's a, I suppose you could say it's a long-term investment, you know, investing in new equipment and stuff like that. And it is, like the equipment's fine, but the traveling is expensive. The accommodation is expensive. And getting to Sheffield was really nice. When I looked at how hard it would be to get to Sheffield, I was like, this isn't gonna work. This is not gonna work. It's not as simple as just flying into Sheffield. It would either be get a boat to Hollyhead or ship to Hollyhead, drive three and a half hours, or get a plane to Manchester, which was really dear, and then get the train the rest of the way, pay for a company. You know, I'm not gonna bore you with those facts, but you know, it, we gotta think long term. So we're, we're working on things. But let me know what you think of this video. Let me know what you think of the new stand. Um, I might go back to the old one. I might keep it like this. It just depends on kind of how it looks at the end. We'll wait and see. For now, people, I'll leave you with that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Peace.